Hi, I'm Olivia, a current fourth year Bachelor of Game Design student with a focus on 2D design and narrative. While going through school, I've become more aware of what accessibility, or rather the lack of there is in games. I've started taking notes on how I could better design my games with accessibility in mind. Though one accessibility that stood out the most to me lately has been that of colorblindness. And yes, of course, the artist would and should think about designing with colorblindness in mind, but that's not always the case. Now, there are already many videos and papers about how to design with colorblindness in mind for games, but that's not the focus for my video. As a lover of both art and narrative, I've grown to wonder how games that use color as a focal point of their narrative works for those who are colorblind. For that, I want to dive into Journey, a game that uses color semiotics to grab their audience and enhance their narrative. Now before I go into talking about the game, I want to talk about the different types of colorblindness I'll be mentioning. Taken from the Colorblind Awareness website, a not-for-profit organization that offers help and advice worldwide, there are three types of categories, Dertanope, Protanopia, and Tritanopes. Now Protanopia and Dertanopes are two types of red-green deficiencies with specific differences. Dertanopes are more likely to confuse mid-reds with mid-greens, blue greens with gray and mid pinks, bright green with yellows, pale pinks with light gray and white, mid reds with mid brown, and also light blue with lilac. Protanopia are more likely to confuse black with many shades of red, dark brown with dark green, orange, red, blue, purple, and black, some blues with some red, purple, and dark pinks, as well as mid greens with some oranges. Tritanopes, on the other hand, being deficiency with blue yellow colors, they are more likely to confuse light blue with grays dark purple with black, mid-greens with blues, as well as orange with red. In terms of other statistics, 8% of men and 0.5% of women in the world will have a red-green type of color vision deficiency. Created by that game company back in 2012, Journey is a game with a narrative told strictly through non-voice cutscenes and environmental storytelling. It uses color seominance of the world to further engage and mostly affect the player, and for that reason is why I decided to use it to showcase the differences. I also figured that using Journey would be the most beneficial in discussing my topic because the color palette is generally consistent throughout the game, making whatever differences to be more noticeable. It's interesting to note that the colors mainly used within Journey are reds, oranges, yellows, greens, pinks, whites, blues, and grays. Each of these colors being portrayed in both the positive and negative meanings throughout the game. Though the most notable meanings will be in red, passion, yellow, the brightness, white as in hope, and blue as in sadness with variations in saturation to change the overall tone to the colors. This is used greatly throughout the environmental storytelling of the game, though more easily shown within the non-colorblind view. Bright yellows of the opening portion of the game are extremely welcoming and exciting. It makes the player want to explore and gives a sense of awe and intrigue. These emotions are then changed during the second and third areas of the game when you're greeted by fresh pale pink sands with soft green skies with white clouds. Very watermelon in appearance, but it does bring a dreamlike feeling to the level. This is of course different within the views of each type of colorblindness. Dertanos being a green weakness end up making the game's colors more saturated, pushing forth the warm tones of the early environments. Meaning that the color psionics that are viewed around are about the same as someone who is not colorblind, but definitely more enhanced. While this color semionics start truly shifting away would be with Protanopia and Trianopes. This being because they are a red weakness and a yellow weakness, respectively. With the Protanopia filter on my computer, it made the environments lack the saturation and red tones of the non-colorblind view. Even the player character has become grayer within saturation in comparison. While Protanopia removes the saturation towards the lighter side, Trianopes make the saturation lean towards the dark side, giving the world a gray-green look to it. This is made more obvious during the sequence of the golden slide, as the player is sliding down the sands with the backdrop of a golden hour peeking through the fallen ruins. Dutanop changes the yellow-brown golds of the sands into this almost bordering on what can only be described as danger orange, <laughs> with Dutanopia and Trinopes giving the entire transition an off feeling to it. It lacks the excitement that is prevalent, and yes, music does help pervade that feeling to the player, but the visual punch that I used to have is lacking. Of course, it is easy to simply compare how the colors change the overall meaning, but I wanted to research more in terms of how color symbionics and color binaries could correlate. In terms of how well-designed Journey is for accessibility, I looked at a few articles and talks on the subject matter. The first one being from the 2019 GDC talk 
Design an Invisible Problem, Designing for Colorblindness and Games. Overall, Journey works well for the time when it was created. Being a game that's more so a general experience, there aren't any puzzles that are color-based nor does it have any UI that will confuse colorblind individuals. If anything, it is the most accessible in terms of just being able to play. And while yes, that does make it really nice for just general accessibility, it does kind of taper off when it is in terms of colorblindness. Sadly, based on time constraints, I was unable to conduct a study of my own to interview colorblind individuals to gain their insights on how they go about describing how they feel while playing Journey. When given the time, I would love to make a follow-up video with those findings. So among the hours of researching, I found one journal that gave me the most amount of information was the one from the Institute of Psychology from the University of Lausanne in Switzerland. The study took 130 men, 64 being colorblind with confirmed color vision tests, to see how colors and emotions associations could vary. To not read over the entire study, the summary of it is that the end results suggested that the color association in adults does not require immediate perceptual color experiences, as contextual experiences were sufficient. This is only punctuated by another article from the website We Are Colorblind, a particularly helpful website created by Tom Van Bervervan that provides articles, resources, and news that is dedicated to making the world a better place for the colorblind. The article goes into how naming a color could be a frustrated event, and that is why a lot of colorblind individuals don't really ask themselves what color something is. Now, in the end, the colors of what something is is not always important as to what the function is for it, which thinking on it more makes sense when reflecting on the GCE talk where the main point was to design puzzles with a color in mind. And that made me think that while yes, color semiotics is a helpful tool for designers and artists to pull more emotions from our players, it is fine that it does not reach everyone. So in closing, what did I learn from exploring this topic? The answer is a couple of things. For one thing, it is, was a difficult topic to research. There was not many studies, articles, or videos that go into the aspect of color semiotics with games as a focus. Not to mention the concept of color meanings have been something that we learn at a very young school age level the happy yellow sun, the sad blue bear. The correlation in some aspect is taught and could be that these meanings are not as meaningful to those who are colorblind individuals. So hoping to find more in-depth sources from our topic brought up a very limited research. Second, and more importantly to me at least, I'm walking away with much more information than I had before about the topic of colorblindness. Not just in the different ways of designing with it in mind, but other ways that I could think about designing other accessibilities. While we cannot ex design, and while we cannot design for every accessibility, nor all the minute differences that those accessibilities might have within themselves, I want to try making a conscious effort to adding those ideals into my designs. Once again, I'm Olivia, and I thank you for listening. <laughs>